Hey guys, welcome to Canadian Quarters Review. I'm Mark. Today we're at Kelowna Power Sports in Kelowna, BC, Canada, and we're checking out a 2024 Honda Rubicon 520. Let's see what we've got here, shall we? Okay, so this guy is going to have 518 cc. It's got an overhead valve, two valves for the single cylinder. It's a PGM FI electronic fuel injection on this guy. It will have a five speed with an automatic clutch transmission and reverse an ultra low first gear, which will be great. It does have standard electric power steering, which would be excellent. It will have the two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, direct front and rear drive shafts with switchable two and four-wheel drive and torque sensing locking differential, which is awesome for the longest time. Honda didn't have any locking front diffs on their machines. I don't know what their thought was behind their stuff, but it just seemed to take Honda forever to bring out a machine with all the best and to bring out a machine with all the bells and whistles that everyone else had. So the fact that this is fuel injected, the locking front diff, and rear independent suspension, uh, it's uh, an amazing, an amazing machine. So the front suspension on this guy, you're going to have a dual A arm with adjustable hydraulic shocks. You're going to have 185 millimeters or 7.3 inches of wheel travel. You're also going to have an independent, that was for the front, you're also going to have an independent dual A arm with adjustable hydraulic shocks with 215 millimeters or 8.5 inches of wheel travel in the rear. So you're going to have some very entry level, very basic tires in this guy, a 25 by 8 by 12 on the front, a 25 by 10 by 12 by the rear. So again, a very popular size, should be very easy for you to upgrade. And of course, just regular steel wheels. For brakes, you're going to have dual 190 millimeter disc brakes in the front, and rear has got a 170 millimeter disc brake. This guy is going to have a ground clearance of 250 millimeters or 9.8 inches. Your wheelbase is going to be 1,294 millimeters or 50.9 inches. Your curb weight is going to be 318 kilograms or 701 pounds. 14 liters of fuel capacity, which includes a 4.9 liter reserve. So the front rack is going to have a 45 kilogram or 99 pound carrying capacity. That's a decent weight. Rear rack is 85 kilograms, 187 pounds. That ain't bad either. You're going to have a towing capacity of 600 kilograms or 1,322 pounds. But, again, I'm stickler for trailer hitches. It's just a tab for a ball. I guess it's better than nothing. But as I said before, Honda is so slow on providing all the bells and whistles that everybody else has. You'll see what I mean when you see their digital display too. It's tiny in comparison to everybody else. You're going to have a 12 month warranty, unlimited mileage, and freely trans transferable here in Canada. Of course, you'll be able to extend that if you wish. All right, let's do a walk around. So the biggest thing about Honda I'm sure there'll be a lot of you out there that disagree with me and just as many that do agree. Uh, they are built incredibly tough. In my opinion, Honda is at the very top. Suzuki, Kawasa or Suzuki and Yamaha are second and third. They're basically tying for second and third. And Kawasaki and them are just as good as Yamaha and, and Suzuki personally. But if you're looking for one tough ATV, Honda is without doubt it. My late friend Andrew could attest to that. He, uh, that's all he rode were, were Honda Rubicons and he definitely put them to the test. He beat the snot out of them. And yes, you had to replace parts here and there, but they took a lot more of a beating than the average ATV would. And he just swore by them and uh, they did them very well. 
and I, everybody I've talked to, Honda, 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 toughest, toughest, toughest thing around. I have other friends that have had two Honda quads that were they bought brand new in the late 90s, early 2000s, and they're still going strong with hardly ever any issues on them. So if you're looking for something that's made tough, Honda is definitely the thing. Honda is definitely the right one for you. Just understand, though, that you are paying for the name. You are getting quality, of course, but you are paying for the name. So Honda is going to give you only a few features here and there because you're paying for the toughness. You're paying for that quality. So you're going to get not such a great LCD display or you're not going to get a two inch receiver. Right. Or you're going to get some really cheap tires and rims unless you go to, of course, a higher trim level. But uh, yeah, there there's pros and cons to everything. Right. And Honda is definitely a very solid machine that will last you a lifetime. Again, just make sure that all your fluids are changed. Make sure your filters are clean. Give it a good soak down after every ride. And you literally have something that will last you for the rest of your life. I do like the fact that they kept metal front racks. And they got a great bumper on the front of this one too, which is excellent. Do you have room there for a winch? Tires definitely need to be upgraded. They'll get you started, but seriously, uh, a radial of six or eight ply, Kenda Bear Claw or uh, Max's Big Horn or something, far better than what it comes with. Still halogen headlights, so yeah, go ahead and upgrade those if you're planning on doing any nighttime riding. You're gonna have a little front pocket here. Pretty tiny, but hey, it's better than no storage at all. Could fit a water bottle, maybe some snacks or something in there. Do you have a third light? I really like those. You're gonna have a 12 volt power supply right there as well. Your fuel tank is like the Polaris on these ones, it's up at the front. Just about a fully enclosed footwell, so hopefully the heat isn't all that bad in the summertime if you're wearing shorts. Probably shouldn't wear shorts when you're riding in the bush with branches hitting you and stuff all the time, but sometimes you're using these for work when you're not into an overgrown trail and it would be nice to have shorts. I have a peek underneath the seat here. So see, again, older technology or older design. So here's your air box underneath the seat. The majority of manufacturers now have actually put it up there. So it's a little bit higher up and away from water. But that's okay. It's just what they do. You're going to have a great switch here for your four-wheel drive. So you push that. Actually, it was already in, but you would push that in for your four-wheel drive. And if you want your front locking diff, just click that up. And that's all you need to do. This is a fantastic design. Suzuki has used that for a long, long time without issue. And there's the tiny little LCD display that I was telling you about. But I'm sure it still works great. And you will have all the controls there for your headlights and signal. Uh, I guess it wouldn't be signal lights, but uh, yeah, headlights, a kill switch, all that kind of stuff is going to be there. Your throttle is where you expect it to be over here. Another great metal rack at the back. It was cool that they actually put a storage space back here. So we just clip this up. And this can drop down. This though, I'm finding is actually quite flimsy. Especially with something with a Honda name on it. But it works. And it's a half decent size compartment back there. So the thing with the Hondas as well, as you probably heard me say that there's actually speeds on this thing. So it is more of a car transmission than it is a power sport transmission. So you're not going to have a belt and uh, it's going to be, well it's going to act like a car. If you're gearing down and stuff like that, the car is going to jerk a little bit as you're going between gears and things. It's not as smooth as uh, the typical ATV. Some guys really prefer that. There's no belts to worry about. And that is definitely a positive. 
and uh, it's just Honda's way of doing its thing and it's been flawless their their transmissions their overall bike like I said is built incredibly well well guys with that it's another episode of Canadian Quarters with you thank you so much for watching come on down to Kelowna Power Sports in Kelowna BC Canada and come check out their amazing uh, display here they've got lots to choose from great people to deal with and I'm in the process of actually switching over to Rumble, my channel that is. I find they're a little easier to work with and they actually give the channel creator a little bit more money. And so yeah, you'll find me over there. CQ Review is the name of the channel over there. Come on over and say hi. Please like and subscribe while you're there. Uh, it'd be great to have uh, a good channel working over there just like I have here. But with that, so appreciate you guys being here. Please remember to hit like and subscribe before you leave here on YouTube. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for watching.